Chris Tilton, you made a video game. We did. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> Finally. It wasn't just you. Uh, yeah, I'm here with a uh, friend of Giant Bomb, Chris Tilton. Hello. Uh, video game composer extraordinaire. Hello, Brad. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, you, you, you tired of solely composing music for video games. Um, well, so I now, was... Now you have gone and gathered a collective of developers and made one... And I was like, I want to score a game like this, and no one was making one. So yeah. I said, let's go make that. Just, just, damn it, I'm going to have to do it myself. Uh, and yeah, you uh, you showed it to Drew here. That's right. Uh, gosh, like a, was it a, a year, year ago, ago at this yeah, time? Yeah, it was, it was GDC a year ago. Yeah. GDC a year ago. You guys were... I, I was not there that day, but uh, you are now a year on from that early demo. What's your game called? Divide. Oh, yeah? Okay. And we can take video this time. Yeah. yeah. We're recording as we speak. Very and if we want, you know, we could show the title. Yeah. When there's a title, there's a late title okay. here somewhere. Okay, I'll, I'll, okay. Believe, I'll wait for the late uh, title card. Uh, your, your compatriot, JD, is also here at the controls. Yes, yes. JD Straw is here. He's our lead designer, uh, so, and he's at the controls. Okay, um, and was it? I guess it was just last week that you guys put out uh, your first kind of big trailer, and you kind of made it onto the PlayStation blog, and out there making some waves. There was a, the NeoGAF thread, of, at, at least of the first night, was all positive. <laughs> okay, <Yes. laughs> so, well, that's a major accomplishment. It is. Uh, so, all right. Well, you know, we, we saw that trailer last week, and I kind of wanted to know more about the game. So here we are. I guess I'll just let you guys start playing. Yeah, so this is, uh, there's, there's a s sort of setup and stuff before you get here. But now the main character, David, is just is it's face down on the ground. <laughs> face down on the ground. Well. This, he was sucked into some sort of wormhole, and, and uh, yeah, the camera comes up with him yeah, sleeping. Now, <laughs> so here he is. Uh, Should I wanna, wake him? Yeah, wake him up. All right, wake up. Come on, David. You can do this. And uh, his daughter's his daughter's missing. Arlie! Yeah, so we saw. Uh, I guess I guess we should say the game is what sort of pre-alpha at this point. Yeah, we're almost just at slightly. alpha. Just a few yeah. more, a few more little sort of last features we'd like to have in right. here, and then and we're also all, it's probably going to hit beta around the same time because really we just have some more VO to record in a couple okay. and a few more like custom animations for a few key right. sequences but so, so still some work to be done but we did uh, we watched uh, most of the intro before this which is not quite final yes uh, and also just you know it's more fun I think to just let people oh, see sure. the now you're sure sure okay. let them discover it for themselves but uh, David seems to have been sucked into a some sort of cyberpunk conspiracy yeah it's, you can say that's, that. my, that's my early read on the situation yeah, I, I, f I feel like Cyberpunk is a little dirtier and grittier, like Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, our look is a bit more like Apple, mm -hmm. I guess you okay. could say. <laughs> like the, like the, the we're slick. We're bringing so, Apple into the Cyberpunk. Yeah, so the, <laughs> slick, the, slick consumer friendly future. The big, yeah. the big corporation here is called the Vestige Corporation. As you can see, Vestige is attached to a lot of yes. things around here. Such, and, as, such as the V points that you have been collecting. Yes, you can collect some V points. Uh, Which has we, no meaning to the player at this point, but yes. later in the game, you'll be able to spend. You them start to things. discover what they're about. Uh, so right now, uh, do you want to talk about, I guess, just what he's doing to control this thing? Yeah, any, anything and everything's fair game here. I'm just, I just want to see what this game's about. So, so he's, uh, you, you use the left stick to move around, and then that little. Uh, JD, why, why don't you take the take sure, the? Sure, it's it's like dual stick con control or dual stick sh shooters. We've got our left stick that moves David around, and the right stick uh, controls his eyes. Basically, uh, later in the game, you get uh, a sidearm, and then it becomes more like strafing around while you're aiming the gun. If you pull it out, yeah, and we'll get there. We'll all get of all part. of our interaction is done with the triggers, so there's there's no reason to move your thumb off the stick. Okay. Uh, the only time is. Uh, we put the menu on on the back button because it's such a culturally ingrained thing we're, by now that we yeah. just we should probably say we should probably say we're, we're playing the PC build right yeah. now uh, a PC build it was just easier logistically uh, uh, the, it'll probably be tapping the pad to open it up for PS4 right yes, yes the, everybody's favorite touchpad yes the, uh, using it as a button <laughs> not as it's yep a that seems to be what most developers have figured out at this point so he'll only it's a big button things will only pop up in the environment if he's looking at them yeah like so in that direction we try to reward uh, slow exploration like if you go sprinting around you can't bring up that augmented reality oh, okay. target and the actual nodes that you interact with in the world won't appear unless you're looking unless they're a critical path node 
So okay. we want to make sure people don't miss story. I guess we should mention uh, right before this, he he got some kind of fancy future contact lenses. Yes. Yeah, so robotic robotic contact lenses. So it's okay. What well, was? Oh, that's you. Mm. You didn't look good. Yeah, he's probably. Oh hey. Oh my God! Thank you. Shit. That thing was crazy. <laughs> my pleasure. We can't let the machines win now, can we? I like this guy already. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those guys. Are you Vestige? No, I'm... I'm David. But you're late. So, I mean, would, you, I mean, would you characterize this primarily as a shooter? Like, it seems like a, there's been a, a fair number of, like, adventure game -y kind of elements. Yeah, so... Uh, so far. It's... it's an... I'm Garrett. Like, if you could say adventure action as opposed mm. to action adventure might okay. be more apt to it. Like, we wanted the we wanted the action to be a bit more methodical and you're you're very vulnerable, so are the enemies. You have to be more more cat and mousey with okay. your, like, running around and, like, trying to flank enemies and stuff like that. They will also employ those kind of tactics against you. Um, early on, there are these these little robot things. And, uh, I, I think you can get exceptionally good at the combat, though. To the point where uh, we tried to set it up so that you can avoid the combat, but if you really like it, you can aggro every room you come to if hmm. you want. I've been stuck at this door. Are the the combat encounters kind of few and far between, or are you going to be running up against stuff like constantly? You you'll be you'll be run into like a little auto labor here and there, or a group of them every now and then. The 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 human enemies uh, that will show up that you saw in the prologue that we didn't show, uh, they will show up at very specific points, and those are like. The more serious uh, stuff you need to be careful with. There, there's a lot of exploration done in solitude where you get to sort of like, you know, think about your situation without having to worry about getting shot in the back. You're wearing one of their doohickeys. Or are you going through this whole conversation? Of course, I accidentally clicked it. <laughs> or committed to it. Stranger in a strange land. David knows not what he wears. got the rails locked It appears. Doors too. And I can't imagine they'll keep this place shut down for good, but you never know. We're pretty far out. I'll say. <laughs> All right. No. Oh, you got. Oh, that's right. We got I got to finish the conversation. Got to hit, gotta hit that trigger. Well, I. I. It's a. You're supposed to be able to walk away and uh, let this, leave this crazy man to his own. No, no, he'll follow you. He, he wants to get past this door. He's, he's stuck at this door and you have the means to get in it. So you put on these contact lenses on, earlier in the game, which let you see all of these sort of augmented reality things. It's basically like when Google Glass eventually just becomes a bunch of contact mm, lenses yes. to throw in your eyes. That's kind of the idea. So like he doesn't have them and so he can't interface with a lot of this stuff. And so, but you have these lenses and you can interface with a lot of this. Ah, oh, crap, did he disappear yep, again? Yep. All right, well. Unbelievable. <laughs> Well, early, early demo here, yeah. folks. Yeah, it, it, it's it's weird. It, it happened recently, and so then he's, it, he's not going to fight for me now, but he'll he'll rejoin us at a later point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he'll still talk. He just won't be. Looks, here. looks like I have to use some advanced tactics here. This so is just like this is the hardcore mode, right? Yeah. Like the NPCs disappear when it's time <laughs> to abandon fight. you. <laughs> You'll do fine against the killer robot. So you don't have a gun yet, but you. As he's talking about, you can you can interface with these things too. Okay. And so, Jerry, why don't you run up and like do the little reboot thing? I, don't know, I just want to wait for him to turn around. Okay. Oh, great. Hey, you can, you can still do it. Uh, Get it. Uh, I missed. That. Mm. Seems so, bad. Okay. There we go. There you go. <laughs> so that scrummer just got scrummed. So you will you will. Yeah, not sure why, that's it. but uh, you will expand these abilities to do things to them, like uh, you can electrocute them, and they will take out uh, other enemies in the area. As you saw in the prologue that we didn't show, that you sort of overload them, and they sort of like explode in a bunch of electricity, and will take out those in proximity. And there's also um, you will get like a reroute thing where you can sort of reroute them on a different path and make them sort of go away. Is that something, uh, I mean, I, I assume that you're going to spend these V-points on something at some point. Yes. Is that something where you're, like, specking in the direction of hacking or, like, kind of focus there more is, on shooting if you want? We have another or? currency that handles oh, progression. the idea of hacking. Okay. Yeah, so the V-points are basically money. Okay. And you will use those at a certain point. Uh, early on, you're just sort of getting it and accumulating it. Okay. You spend uh, a lot of time in, like, the old abandoned parts of this world, and then... Yeah. 
Yes. So we will. Here, here is one of our matte paintings. It's it's not final yet, but it's getting close. Uh, Garrett will rejoin us here. Whoa. <laughs> I think I showed you this part, Drew, a year ago. Similar. Wow. That's, that's a serious painting. Yes! There it is, as promised, late title card. Uh, so how long have you guys been working on this? Like, I, 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 I find the, the trajectory of all like you know right. doing music for games to all of a sudden like starting a small indie developer it, it kind of took a, it's kind of an uncommon one you know I would say you know I we can just well, we can just JD our lead designer we used to be I knew I've known him from college I used to do the music to his animations in college okay. and uh, we both moved out to LA at a similar time this is Garrett trying to rob the player um, but anyway uh, and so we've always just sort of brainstormed game ideas but over a decade ago, it wasn't really feasible. You had to work at a game company and work your way up for a long period of time before you could even before anyone would hear you pitch a game. Right. And like, we were on separate career paths at that point. I was really focusing on music, and I don't know. It, it was actually when Supergiant released Bastion, yeah. where I was like, holy, like shit, you can do, you can just get a small team together and do this realistically now, right. and release it and keep on a platform that people have that they can play. Uh, and it was after that game came out. Nobody, I was nothing. like, oh, we should. I don't know this now's the time. Yeah. I need your help. So tools, let's do it. tools are getting democratized enough. Like the kind of. Yeah, in fact, that, I think that was process now. on a GDC live show of yours where we were just getting started. And I was yeah. talking about. Oh, okay. I don't. It must have been at least from three three years ago because we've been we started the very beginnings at the end of like 2012. It's mm -hmm. like when we started. So it's been a long, slow. Thing, but I'm glad we waited as long as we did to show it because we don't have any kind of vertical slice. Were you attacked? And so there were many points where I wanted to show it, but uh, we shouldn't. Somehow I don't know. I mean, you hear all the time from developers like you know, did you meet? You kind of have to take time out of the regular production schedule to work on a vertical slice, right? And make, make yeah, that yeah, it's good. like we don't have like the probably, resources to do that. Yeah, right. How many people are working on the game? Uh, we need to get there, our core full-time people are just me, JD, and Shai Kalev. He's our programmer. Okay. Uh, it's a very, very small crew, though. Yes, but we also have uh, a couple part-time people helping with the pipeline, getting stuff in the game, and, and polishing lighting and, and various systems and stuff. And so there's, there's something big noise coming, and that's why you're forced back into this bunker. It's got a real cool look to it. I I, I like the the lighting. And it's, yeah, it's the the, the it's what stood out in the trailer to me was the line of sight lighting, the real harsh shadows that yes. kind of peek uh, around corners and stuff like that. Chris Durso, our environment artist, basically did all of the art in the entire game. He worked he worked also on contract for like two years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Get doing all of the art. Um, yeah, we had and he did, really and he did a big, lot of first pass lighting to get us started uh, like for all of the lighting and stuff. Who? And like who cares? And then our animator was on for probably about a year. Uh, both of them, both of them, actually, our animator Kevin, he works, he's worked, he worked on Halo Five. <laughs> he okay. went on to do some other stuff. Sure. Garrett said it was a vestige. Um, and actually, Chris Durso worked on Halo 4. He, he, what was the crashed ship you get to in Halo 4? Okay. He did like that whole, I think you walk out of it with a mech at the end or something. Is that right? That sounds like something that would happen in a Halo game. Sure. He did that whole area. Okay. Wow. I think you, you said before this, like, you just met somebody who worked on this game for the first time in the last oh, day yes. or two. <laughs> One of our voice, the, actually, Eris, the oh, right, girl right, on yes. the, the right, uh, yes. she, she had her own vocal booth set, booth set up. She, she actually just moved closer to where I live now, but she, she lived in uh, Orange County for a while, and we just did, she recorded locally, and we just directed over Skype, oh, wow. and then she would just send, and we would take our take notes, uh -huh. and then she would send the audio over, and then we edit it from there. And I just, yeah, sure just met her in person know. today for the first time. Wow. And actually, it's like our, that, that modern game development. Yeah, right our here. environment artist and the animator, I've never met in person. Wow. That's nuts. That's super crazy. Distributed game development. Yeah. Yep. How did you get here? <laughs> Sunset line. 
four kilometers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anything that's so, not recorded is voiced by Stephen Hawking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a text to speech in there to make sure or Dr. you know Spazzo. you know yeah. that you didn't record this yet. You need to record this. I, I was hoping you just had like Dr. Spazzo throw back like robot voice in the game, but <laughs> that's fair too. It must be one in this facility. A control center. Yeah. So we're getting we're getting closer to where we can start talking about sort of the basic explore gameplay. I guess JD, you'll you'll start heading there and we'll yeah. start tackling that. Um, but do you have any questions, broad questions about? Oh, uh, not really. I mean, I just kind of you know just want to see shoot some stuff. Okay. Kind of kind of get a feel for. You'll be getting uh, the the gun very soon. Yeah, or or explore some stuff. Yeah. Yes, we'll do uh, both of those things. Are there? Here she's arguing why you shouldn't have a gun. <laughs> yes, and she will relinquish one later. Went off how? Where? Uh, in the grand adventure game tradition, will there be puzzles? Do you have an inventory? Is it that kind of an adventure game? So no, it's not like inventory. We are like use this on this. There's right. nothing like that. A lot of it is uh, of your progress is gated with. Uh, so when you. Oh. That shouldn't be like that. But uh, there will be things that you can't access yet, and you either have to brute force ac uh, with with the hashes, which is the currency that we'll be getting to soon. If she has the gun. <laughs> that, that robot's a little broken. <laughs> so you have the means to unlock. She doesn't have your lenses. So you have the means to interface with all this stuff properly. And she's kind of like, uh, she'll go in manually and and start hacking things and give you the ability to go to terminals and extract data and the information and basically you'll be getting these hashes that allow you to spend to break into systems that are off limits to you uh, whether that be terminals or things that have upgrades in them or air areas that you can't couldn't previously access uh, and it's, it's it's a little bit kind of metal gear solidish that way in which we have like Things that you can brute force unlock, and certain things where you need like special clearances, almost kind of like the the level whatever ID cards that will give you greater access. So like this facility, like you will spend, uh, yeah, ignore that music <laughs> cutting <laughs> off like that. Nice transition. Um, I, you know, I, I I have to say it's admirable when developers are willing to show their games like way before they're done. You know, like a lot of yes, people are very skittish about that. But let's see what you can access. yeah, well, I feel like if Game we're here, if we're here to talk about it, it's fine. Right, like, people right, understand I mean, stuff. It's, if it was done, you'd be out. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a good way to put it. I know, game, game development is a is a big, beautiful, sloppy, oh, yeah. imperfect mess, right? Yes. Yes. They're encrypted. We need a control locus. Yeah, so she's talking about, we need to do this thing that will let you get into Once some stuff. Once you find the locus, use your lenses to bring it online. All manually hack in. Then we can mine some IDs, and then we can get it. So have you been... Composing for other games on the side while you guys have been working on this, or are you 100 percent full, like head down? I, I have, and there's been times where I've had to kind of leave it, leave it up to them, and fo like, Here we go. Leave, like when when we were in the, I did the music to Assassin's Creed Unity a couple of years ago, and we were in the middle of that. It's just like I had to kind of not work on the game a little bit, and yeah. that's sometimes delays some stuff. Sometimes we're at these weird points where, like last summer, um, I'm all set. There should be a we we converted to we focus. to Unity five and got like our PS first PS four build up and running and that took like three months of mm -hmm. just technical and stuff to it. sort we're through. In business. So as long as I'm connected, you'll be able to now we're back on track to sort of Once we have we're at the point where I'm just sort of scripting the remaining critical path and story beats and stuff and we're pol polishing AI systems mm -hmm. and things like that and okay. so we're getting we're getting close. So he's unlocking some servers. This is this sort of big master thing. You could almost you could almost say, maybe I shouldn't say this, but you could almost say you know kind of like the Ubisoft method of unlocking this thing, which unlocks that's so, the tower. So, so you're climbing a tower right now, is what you're yes. saying. Um, you will never compose for another Assassin's Creed game now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, you, yeah, you're about to get your your gun, and you'll be able to. So, 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 so now you see where it says hashes up there, zero. And okay. Like, we'll be getting some of those. Where did you get your solace? You mean? So you were saying before we started recording. Yeah, I mean, the lenses. stuff we've seen here is pretty critical path, like story right. setup type stuff. Obviously. Yeah, there's a lot of that, like the, but we. You mentioned the levels are like pretty open, actually. Like, is it is it gonna? Does it just kind of open out at some point, and you sort of focus more on exploring and roaming around, as opposed to yes. kind of golden path from from A to yes, B? Yes. I mean, this is. 
Okay, so so we have sort of three huge open sprawling complexes that you'll explore. Um, this first one, we're getting a bit of setup and sort of introducing you to the systems and, and stuff that you'll use to explore and break in. But certainly, when you uh, after you when you get into like the next one, it's more like here's your goal. Now go figure it out, and you're just sort of left to your own devices to just explore this massive place and figure out how to access the areas you need to access, and you'll be you know fighting enemies on your way and getting through and hacking enemies and doing all, all that stuff. And then we have like a, th a third, there's like three huge sprawling areas you will explore throughout the game. And they range, like if you just sort of beeline through it, like this area maybe three hours, uh, two to three hours, and then, but if you like actually want to explore and get out of it, you could spend as much as like six hours just in each kind of section. But I guess you're right. This, uh, this particular environment, we, we kept a lot of the uh, the open exploration kind of together. So each area has its own little like branches to check out. And then in the next in the next level, it's like the whole world is just, the whole level is open for exploration from the beginning. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, uh, and, and if you are gated by things, it's like you need this clearance. And so you gotta figure out how to, how to get that. And once you get that, you can then go into more nooks and crannies and there are things that wrap around and shortcuts and all sorts of fun stuff and extra areas and uh, we do have upgrades too so like to your your e-laser you want to bring that out sure um, so this is so once you pull the left trigger to bring the gun out it's kind of like a dual stick shooter and but you don't fire until you pull the right trigger but you're moving with the left stick aiming with the right stick and it's just you're fully independent on movement and you can move in any direction you want, aim in any direction you want. Um, strafe around corners, whatever. What does the E stand for? Electro. Okay. It's actually based on some on real technology of a, basically like a long range taser that uses the air between them to like send a charge. Okay. Huh. Uses the particles the, between them. The, the current ex like version existing in the real world requires like a suitcase battery. Oh wow. So we thought, hey, the. It's I, want, I, wanted, I, I wanted to make sure that you weren't just going around murdering people throughout the whole game, okay. and then that just sort of throws off any emotional weight to a lot of things. And also, you know, the Vestige Corporation, you're more used to, the, to them alive than you are dead, so that was kind of the, the conceit of that. Um, oh yeah, so now you can start acquiring hashes, and with each... Uh, some of the low-level stuff, you get just some very basic information, but as you, when you start um, extracting from terminals and getting hashes, you'll start to get information about the story and about, um, there's, I guess I won't say too much about the main character's relationship to what this place is, but uh, he, he starts discovering things about people he used to know that he didn't, like a sort of a double life about them and okay. stuff like that, and you start discovering things about this corporation that they were involved in and hmm. you start slowly figuring out where the heck this is you know why are you in this futuristic area and all those things that lady didn't know what a hurricane was yeah, yeah. so this place is seems very different than at least the weather does um, all right so JD use your use your hashes to go back to the command center server and unlock the terminals so we can start getting go, uh, go, go back to the the servers and where Eris is and yeah now that you have enough to kind of get started yep. so you can just start unlock choosing whether you want to unlock these doors and explore over here or if you want to you you know it's possible to get enough you're, you're trying to get enough hashes we were kind of talking over it, but there's this supervisor terminal that she points out not this one the other one the other one? Yeah, the, the, this is the command center one. Alright. Um, there's this supervisor terminal that needs like a bunch of hashes to get to break through, which Era says that'll probably have the clearance we need to get past some later later areas of this place. So you're, that's your sort of immediate goal to, to get enough hashes to break into this computer terminal. But now, now that he's unlocked them, so you'll start extracting from these terminals and we'll start pulling up some data. We can so you got your hash, and then you got hey, this, the Vista View Cafe has reopened. So you said a lot of the 
first stuff is a little bit more innocuous, like world building stuff, and then as you prog progress further into the facility past more secure areas, you'll start uncovering things that are related to even the way you got here, and you'll start uncovering of what this place uh, really the, is. The dark and unseemly truth. Yes. Uh, what, uh, what should I unlock next? Why don't you go into the, unlock the door to the lobby and go back in there and shoot those auto labors. Yeah, let's shoot some stuff. Yeah, main lobby. Main lobby. Where those do the offices. Yeah. Don't don't do the lock array. You'll just you'll you'll spend a bunch, and we don't necessarily yeah. need to go there right now. So, and if you if you ever just recklessly spend your hashes, like Eris slowly uh, siphons them herself, okay. and you can go back to that main supercomputer, and you can like grab some. Okay, I was just about to ask if those were a finite resource. Yeah. Is, this, is it possible to see everything, or are you ever going to lock yourself? I guess, I guess not if, if they're... No, I mean, if you... If they slowly replenish, you can always kind of get enough to, to yeah, it's, open everything if you, up. If you're reckless with it, though, it's... it's you, she replenishes them this slowly, and she only, you only get like five at a time at most. So it's encouraging you to like spend them wisely. But yeah, you can, you can, you can explore everything. You, yeah, can, you can see everything. It's <laughs> kind of hard to play so ineptly that you won't have enough ashes to progress and have to like wait around. It's, if, you just, if you value exploring at all, you're going to load up on ashes. Okay, they got... I got him. Oh. How uh, survivable are you? Is it like, um, are you the, gonna... These guys are not super strong. When you get to the auto labors that have the dual guns on them, they can take a little bit off and they will bring you down. When you get to human enemies, though, like a couple shots, you're done. You're done. Okay. And they'll um, gang up on you. And, okay. And and you'll be very if you if if they gang up on you and you try to just stand there and point at all of them and shoot them, you will die. Okay. So more more of a more about surviving than like yes. kind of a balls out action. Or you game. won't die. You'll be unconscious. Okay. You'll be okay. Um. So this is this, is, this seems like this game is very much like story and exploration first and combat. Yes. Yeah, so combat in service of that. And it's sort of, and it's kind of a slow build. Things get more hairy as you progress. Yeah. And you get more little hacking abilities to make them do things. Like when you get the overload ability, um, I wish I wish I had set it up so you get it earlier so we could show it. But you could like, they, they start, the auto labor start like, like overloading electricity, but you, they'll still chase you. So you could like start it and it's like a four second countdown timer and you get it to chase you and you can lure them into an area and have them, the explosion take out a bunch of other guys with it too, so you can do things like that. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, did use some debug commands to boost up my ability to arc the energy between enemies. Oh wait, you enemies. can you have 16. Go unlock the computer now. You can unlock the the supervisor terminal. No, no, no. It's not. It's in the. Uh, oh, it's in the command. It, it's in the um the that, the hall to the right where, uh, you, where you came. Oh, out. that's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, super, I, I, the, the supervisor terminals are sort of like the big treasure chest at the end of the thing that has like an, at least some new thing that you get and also some story information like which we'll, we'll get. Yeah, so go I ahead and open 15. this. So you got a bunch, uh, five hashes, you got a new clearance, Nova clearance, and... That sounds ominous. Uh, All right, so now we're in the Solus. Uh, this is like when, when you're... you're uh, Google glasses, like opaque over Don't your eyes. Don't say Google. It's not Google. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, they're, they're Google glass-like contact lenses. Like it's your, you it's, it's your, your vestige view. Yes, yeah. there you go. It's we, it's called the Solus, and it stands for something really dumb. I don't remember. I don't remember what you said it was. Most acronyms are. Yes. So that's okay. Um, so this that's is uh, go go back in the Solus and let's ex explore the info there a little bit. Okay. Um, so this is we're still going to do another iteration of this, and and you know it's it's very flat right now, but. These, uh, basically this database will be, will slowly fill out this radial menu of various subjects and in it will po then populate various uh, information that you get. And some of this information will be relevant and if when you look at it, you have to, you, you can't just get it. You have to open this up and look at it. Mm -hmm. And then once you look at it, you'll say, oh, uh, Looks like it seems like relevant. Deep. Something that ties back into his life, he, he'll have some interest in it and you can actually go to Aerith and talk to her about it. So oh, cool. at its base, at its basic, you're 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 getting information that then will once you look at it, it will unlock conversation options with this companion character okay. that is kind of with you through most of the game. Gotcha. So you'll be able to 
bounce off like, what does this mean? What the heck, what are V points, you know? Things like that, and you can ask her about those things. Or if you're just in the, if you just want the big broad stroke beats, you don't have to engage in a lot of that. There's sure. certain conversations that you have to engage in that are, that are critical. But, you know, or, or if you want to do the thing like, I want to go exploring and just rack up a ton of stuff and then go back and like have a bunch of conversations, you know, it's kind of, you can do it at your own pace kind of thing. And that was kind of a, an overall philosophy. I kind of like, I kind of like the idea of, and, and not necessarily just this game, but just any game we make. I just, I like the idea of, if you want to have the pace of like a movie, you could, you could, you could do that. But if you want to slow it down to more like a TV show and get into the more of the nuance of characters and stuff, you can do that too. And you can kind of do it whenever you want. Like you don't have to, you can just play through for a while and then you can be like, I'm in the mood to slow down and like sure, talk sure. about some stuff. You just could, I completely have forgotten until you just said TV that you have worked in TV. <laughs> so I guess you, I guess you've got some, I mean, did, was that actually like an instructive experience? Like do you kind of scoring for TV shows? Like did that kind of inform like how you lay out a story in a video game? Yes, I mean, I, I just my, my experience, not just doing the TV shows, but just working like for Michael on various JJ products. Like I got to Michael, be, yeah. Michael Giacchino. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Oh, sorry, well, I just say that not, every, not everybody first, will know, know who that is. First name um, I was very fortunate when JJ did his first movie, in Mission Impossible 3, we got involved really early on and we got to see early cuts of it and like story uh, issues that they were wanting to resolve and how they fixed it mm -hmm. and like, uh, and that, I absorbed as much as that as I can. I, th I think I was just interested in a time. I didn't know I was going to use that knowledge to help create a game, but like th that doing TV and doing all that stuff and working, especially working for people who, in which storytelling was very important. And right. We're all very good at it. I got to see how you do it the right way. And that has definitely influenced the way I approach this. Right, and especially because in those cases, you're at the end of the production chain, right? Like yeah. you're waiting for them to lock their edit before you can even start really composing. Yeah, right? so yeah, usually, yes, yeah, that's usually how are, it is. Are, are, it depends on, sometimes in movies you get certain sequences or more, and it's like, hey, let's get started on this one, see how things are working right. kind of thing. So but you're it, so you're just kind of, by necessity, being exposed to that, like, editing and refinement process. Yes, right? yeah. just by its nature. And yeah. Wait, what is Nova open? Wait, are you, it should open. Uh, oh, it's, I probably didn't, uh, the dialogue gets stuck. Uh-oh. Oh, that's what happened. Well, explore more of the area. We don't need to move. <laughs> like the the next the next section is like a new map hanging in a whole new area. Um, but there's still more to to look at in here. Like that door where it says you need. Oh well, what does where, where the um, was the text showing up for the nodes? Um, or was that like not showing up? Thanks. I'm not sure why this dialogue got stuck, but yeah. it's a volatile can you, game. No, can you, look at that. We're we're jammed. Okay. Well, let's 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 uh, let, why don't you run around and explore and just kind of see if uh, if you can't activate any nodes, then, then that's all <laughs> we'll she wrote. Call, we'll just call you it can, a day. I you guess. can shoot some stuff. Yeah, that always works. Uh, we, you know. Oh, did you, did you, can you get that? No. Uh, I uh, think yeah, it, our interface is now jammed. We have yes. we have destroyed <laughs> your GDC build Pre -alpha. of your video game. Well, what probably okay. what I mean, probably happened is I didn't check this dialogue, and there's like some empty field, and it got stuck uh, in the dialogue chain, for, and it's like it won't let us proceed with it's, with the yeah. It's waiting Even for the music. Doesn't know what to do. It's waiting for another line. Well, the music come. is done because you finished. You gave her the conversation where you right. You were ready to go, basically. But like there's still locked doors in this area where you don't, like you can't get across that bridge yet and you won't discover how to get over there until a little bit later right. exploring. So there's lots of like places you see, oh, I gotta remember that. I really, I really like that feeling in games and, and I, like, I, like, um, I like getting invested in a sense of place where uh, things become familiar and comfortable and then you feel like you get to know it, and because I feel like when you just sort of shoot some stuff and move on, nothing sticks with you. Right. You have like no memory. Of, so it doesn't of really establish place. much of like a sense of place if you're yes. if you're not spending some time there poking around. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, in that vein, do you have is, is there kind of like a mapping interface? Like if you're talking about these big areas, like yes. Yeah, so, well, there's there's no like um, mini map that just t tells you everything, but there is. Um, 
when you saw that little command table the way he was unlocking some remote doors and some other things there, uh, every one of those will have a new section of the map that unlocks. Okay. Um, and it, when you go to your, that, that's, 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 that's not plugged in right now. Uh, it was on an older version. But uh, you'll start to unlock sort of very broad strokes of this is this area and here's, here's the section of this area that you're in that will tell you where it is. And we'll have like some names of some landmarks to help you, to help you figure out where you are. Right. Um, but yeah, as you, as you explore one of these giant areas and you can slowly start unlocking the map and you'll, as you look at it, you'll get a better sense. But I really wanted you to be able to like explore it and just sort of learn it like, you know, like in GTA when you're learning the city for the first time and you're getting to know, oh, I recognize this street here and, and this is a shortcut here sure. and things like that. Yeah. And that makes sense. I wanted to have that kind of feeling. Excellent. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to make you run around your build yeah. <laughs> all afternoon <laughs> since you can't progress here. But, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a good first overview of uh, what you guys have going on. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you think it would be worth um, showing a little bit of the prologue while you're fighting? You want to do it? What do you think? Well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to leave it up to you. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, we might, we might want to cut there. Yeah. And, and cut to another build. Yeah, let's come back. Since we've kind of, yeah. Yeah, all right, sure. All right, we have made the game time decision to, uh, we basically rolled the, the build back here to kind of the intro of the game, uh, just so you can guys can show off just a couple more minutes of uh, what you described as, as higher energy combat. Shooting robots. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is actually earlier in the game, right? It's Yo, kind of the intro sequence. It's, it's one of those cold opens, yeah. and then you'll you'll eventually catch up to here. But okay. Yes. Since, uh, since we got kind of jammed up earlier there. Take a look at just a little bit more running and shooting. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that guy is not a good guy. No. I mean, you can't even see his face. Well, not yet. He's you highlighted in red. Yes, he's red and his face is obscured in shadow. He must be evil. He's got a great evil guy voice, though. I like that. Uh, he was also, he was, he was the announcer on one of the Super Smash Brothers games. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna. No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I, 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 Jimmy's I have, played some of this game. Yeah, I have to, I have to <laughs> say I appreciate the, the the mild uncertainty between you guys as you're showing this <laughs> off. Like, well, uh, it could happen fast if you're. Yeah. When you get into these kinds of situations. Well, more to the point, I mean that's kind of just the nature of showing off a game that's not finished, right? Well, also just I want you to feel uncertain <laughs> for these things. This right. Poor guy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, the idea is that things should feel hairy and a little, things can get out of hand really quickly. Right. Is, and I want you to be able to, I want you to run around and, and like, I gotta get out of here and re-approach, re-approach the, the situation a right. little bit. Um, but one of the features we are gonna add is our sort of, our take on a second win in which like, if you do go down in this, she'll kind of, Eris will kind of revive you in a sort of like, uh, safe area, still in the zone. You have another chance to come out and get out of here is that without you, losing progress. Is that something you have to pull off to, to make that work, or is it just she's got kind of a? If she's with you, there are other parts oh, of the okay. game where she's not with you. Okay. Uh, like you, and and when you're just sort of, there'll be certain key sequences where she'll have to be with you. Have the clearance to get um, but as you're exploring a lot of the area, if you're like. I want to go shoot some stuff with you, and you can, she can just come along. Now, when she's with you, she's not breaching the network and allowing you to uh, hack terminals and things. But she can come in and help clear an area, and then you can send her back, and then you can gotcha. hack, hack okay. stuff. So you can do things like that. You want me to open the door? No, 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 don't open the door. Ah, all right, well, <laughs> all we're right, going to call it here then. Yes. We have reached the point beyond which... Mysterious future train. No one can see. Yes, if, if uh, any fans of Goldeneye might recognize yeah. the inspiration for that train. Oh, yeah? yeah okay. Totally. The armor train in Goldeneye. Yeah, Chris, uh, I did, this was without prompting uh, from our environment artist. I just said, I want something, uh, an awesome looking armor train. And uh -huh. he, he immediately went to Goldeneye, yeah. which is... Something I also, I love that train <laughs> for Golden Eye. Yes. Unexpected, it's but a good appropriate. Train. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, uh, Chris and JD, thanks for stopping by. Hey, yes. Thanks for having us. And uh, I think, uh, you know, later as we get closer, we could show some more stuff. Mm -hmm. 
and we will come back, or maybe I'll, it'll just be something where I give you and you can have at it or sure. something. So, so you guys are, uh, you're out first on PS4, is that right? Yes, that's our goal is to, to come out first on PS4 and then we'll sort of reconcentrate our efforts on the PC, on a PC build. So that, okay. that will come after, that will come not long after, it's not like PC six months, I'm talking about like maybe a month Okay. Two at most after the PS4. Okay. Uh, depending on, you know, well, we don't have a publisher right now, but we're talking to publishers. Okay. Maybe we will have a publisher and that will... That's you a good know, thing to do at GDC. Yes, we're, we're very small and we, we can't... We're, we're, we work best when just like the three of us are tackling one problem mm -hmm. at a time. And so we're just going to make sure it's great on PS4 and then we'll make sure it's great on PC. Excellent. All right, well, we will keep our eyes peeled. And uh, thanks again for stopping by. Thank you for letting Thank me you. stop by. Yep.